Today, we're going over the chi spiracy theory. This is an Annie theory video. We've done one of these before. And this one is going to be a bit more in depth than I imagine many of the others are going to be. Now, I'll be honest, the chi spiracy, obviously a portment out of chi conspiracy, is my own. And as I've gone through the reread of the Animorph series, I, I didn't start with this idea of the chi being double crossing gits. But as I went through, it became more and more apparent to me that there were some weird shenanigans going on in the background. What I'm suggesting with the chi spiracy theory is not that... Right, put it this way. World War II, you have the Allies, right? So Britain, America, the USSR, and a bunch of other countries. And then you've got the enemies, essentially. So you've got your Germanys, you've got, at first, the USSR before they came back, you've got Japan, and you've got all of them, right? So if we were to compare these different nations to groups within the Animorphs universe, of course it's not going to be completely accurate, but the Allies are the Animorphs, essentially. The Andalites, obviously not a great comparison, but close enough, the Andalites are the USSR. They originally helped out the Nazi, Nazi Germany by helping to invade Poland, and then they got backstabbed by the Nazis and said, oh, well, we don't like you anymore, so we're going to fight with these guys against you because we don't like you anymore. So yeah, that's basically the Andalites. Obviously, the Yerks are Nazi Germany. Where, where do the... the well, who, who could... The, I think... Taxons. They could be Belgian. The Taxons are Belgian. I don't know why I just want... Just because. And um, the Chi. Where do the Chi fit in this? The Chi are Switzerland. The Chi just sort of hang back, look at everything going on and say, well, isn't this all just a bit of a kerfuffle? Get the popcorn, lads. Let's see how this goes. Of course, this is a bit of a faulty analogy because they actually were involved in, in some regards. I think Switzerland were as well in, in some ways. But... That's sort of where my cheese spiracy idea lies. They're not allies of the animals, but nor are they really allies of the Yerks. They're just sort of in this middle ground, watching everything, eating the popcorn, saying, how can we fuck with these guys a bit more? How can we get them to meet up at this underwater place? Can we get them to meet up over there? Wouldn't it be great to see them fight in some weird environment over there? Like they're watching a video game or a movie. That's what I get the impression from the chi. So why do I think this? Why, have the, why has this chi spiracy theory come up in my dim little British head? Let's go over some of the ideas why. Firstly, let's cover some of the basic things we know about the chi that will become relevant in this video. One, programmed pacifists. There was some guy who commented on Book 33, The Illusion saying, did you not know that they're programmed pacifists? <laughs> yeah, that's what they tell us, of course, and for the most part, they are. Don't mean that they can't be deceptive little gits. Going back to my World War II thing, right? There's, a, there's covert and there's overt warfare. The, the 20th century was full of overt evil, right? So the Nazis, the, the communists, that all that overt evil shit going on. 21st century seems to be a lot more covert, underhanded stuff. You've got China doing all its stuff right now, basically infiltrating all these governments. No bloodshed, well, not much, as far as we know, apart from the Uyghur genocide. Fuck whoever's responsible for that shit. <sighs> it just needs to be fucking said. But it's more covert, everything's more subtle more devious, rather than going around shooting people, you know, I'm bad, I'm bad, I'm evil. No, you're buying up all the, uh, getting up all these politicians and sort of whispering in their ear, you know, do this, do that, and getting your way about it. World Economic Forum and all that bullshit. Again, a big F you to certain people in this regard. The Chi aren't overt in their bullshittery. They are covert, they are 21st century villains. Funnily enough, in a 20th century environment, because the Animos is in the 90s. But yeah, that is where I'm coming from. And yes, they're pacifists. They are pacifists, but that doesn't mean that they can't be evil pricks. 
okay? We know that they're involved with the Elamist because Eric pals around with the Elamist. If you go back to my uh, Chi analysis video, I'll go, I give you the quotes that show that Eric and the other Chi know about the Elamist and actually are in contact with the Elamist. As well as that, we know that there's a big Pemelite ship underwater that they keep shifting around so that it's hidden from the Yerks until, funnily enough, the next time the Yerks manage to find it <laughs> each time. But there's also a computer system in that ship which controls the, all of the Chi and that controls every aspect of their movement. And it also holds Chi Net, which they describe as some sort of internet for the Chi. The implication from this is that if it's all controlled by this one computer that controls all of the Chi, that the Chi have a hive mind of sorts. Okay, so that's the implication I get. They have a hive mind. We also know that they can project holograms that can be shot at and destroyed without harming the Chi themselves. At least that's what the implication is. Whether what happens in the book sometimes differs, but again, covert, evil, do badding bastards. Belgians, basically. Belgians are the Honda Jazz drivers of Europe. They, they really are. I when, Whenever I've gone through Belgium, it's just been a nightmare of weirdness. I went into a service station and in Britain, your service stations are all nice. You know, if you got artwork on the walls, it's usually some abstract art. You know, nothing great, but also nothing offensive. I go in this service stop in Belgium, and there's pictures of screaming faces on the wall. They're just sort of looking at you, and you're thinking like, oh, that's just, okay. So I left this service station, got back to the car, and we were parked next to this tree that was white. I didn't think much of it at first when we parked next to it, but looking closer, it was entirely covered in maggots. This tree in this service station was just a maggot tree. Why do you think I've got such a negative view of Belgium when that's what their service stations are like? Nice chocolate, though. We first meet the Chi in book 10, The Android. Where do we first see them? Well, the first one we see specifically is Eric. And what is he doing? He's handing out leaflets for the sharing, okay? On the face of it, the animals think this guy must be involved with the Yerks. And then it's discovered later that they're actually infiltrating the Yerks, they're spying on the Yerks, and also infiltrating the sharing meetings. Okay? Right. So we're supposed to think, ah, uh, they're the good guys, they're infiltrating the, the sharing meeting. Okay. Put it this way. You're infiltrating a group of... Let's go back to Nazis, right? You're infiltrating a concentration camp, right? And you're, you're supposed to be a spy finding out what's going on in this place. But you're actively, like, beating people while you're doing it. You're actively finding a Jew and just whacking them and then pushing them towards their death. Like, with the horrible fucking diggers, put them into trenches in the ground. You're actively doing that. At what point do we say, okay, you're no longer just a spy, you're also complicit, right? You're also complicit in that evil shit going on, okay? Eric is handing out flyers for the sharing. He's actively going up to people and saying, hey, join this group, join this group. Recruiting people. At what point do we say, okay, maybe you're a spy, but you're also sort of helping them out a little bit? And yeah... This one example, you can sort of shrug off and say, well, maybe there's something else going on. But as we all know, if you've watched my reviews, there's an awful lot of other bullshit that goes on with the Chi, and it all adds up. And then you think, well, if Eric's handing out these flyers, surely he knows that the Animorphs are around and he's trying to get their attention. Maybe that's why he's doing it. He's trying to bring their attention towards him. No, because as Eric quotes from Book 10, The Android, we didn't know, but I felt something strange. That's in regards to the Animorphs being there. Eric op openly says, I didn't know. I mean, I, f I might have felt like there was something going on, but I didn't know that the Animorphs were there. I was just busy handing out these leaflets. Little bastard, Eric. We then go into the underground base in Book 10 and learn a bit more about the Chi. 
Remember when I talked about Chinet, which makes it's this lot of this internet hive mind that's controlled by the Pemelite ship, which controls all of the Chi. You would assume that, yes, they must be a hive mind. OK, and maybe this was written later on because that was book 27 and we're in book 10 right now. And we know for a fact that the authors weren't always consistent with the rules and the logic of this universe book, like the early books, especially were later retconned in, in some regards. But you get lines like this. Humans and Andalite, here, what have you told them? While you and the others merely hope everything will work out, my friends and I have been infiltrating the Yerk organisations here on Earth. The Yerks even think I am one of them. So if there is the Chi Net, this hive mind thing, this wouldn't need to be explained. But funnily enough, they're having this conflict, right, when the Animorphs come in. So the Animorphs are in now, they're talking to Eric, and suddenly Chi Lonos comes up and starts arguing. How dare you infiltrate the Chi and spy on the enemies of these lovely humans here? How dare you help them out? Yeah, you see, with this whole covert thing, the Animorphs are kids and they're quite gullible. It could be genuine, I'm just saying. But it's a very sinister way of trying to convince your supposed allies of your supposed allyship. <laughs> How dare you help them out? We didn't agree on that. <sighs> yeah, okay. And then we have the whole trapped yerk thing. So these are pacifists, okay? Pacifists. But they hold Yerkes prisoner in their heads. Somebody in, I think a recent video, sort of gave me the old argument. I wasn't sure if it was a devil's advocate thing or whether they, they meant it. Either way, um, they mentioned that the Yerkes didn't know that they were being tortured or whatever. W where does it cross the line into violence? I mean, this is regardless because he causes Rachel searing agony in book 32. But if we just ignore that, is this a type of violence, holding somebody prisoner, holding them from the outside world? Because, as is explained in the books, I made a place for him instead. He sees nothing, knows nothing. I tapped his memory, not the other way around. And now I can pass among the Yerks like one of them. He sees nothing, knows nothing. It doesn't sound like he's seeing a different reality or knowing a different reality he sees nothing he knows nothing he's just sat in there waiting for them to the animals to finally find out that she are double crossing bastards and for them to be dismantled let's hope that day is soon but not only that let's look at that last line again and now i can pass among the yurks like i am one of them that's a funny line, isn't it? Can pass among the Yerks like he's one of them. Just like he passes among the humans as one of them with his holograms. Just like he passes as an Anwos ally as if he was one of them. Everything is this big illusion. Passes among the Yerks, passes among the humans. Who's to say he isn't also passing among the Anwos as an ally? Because as Eric quite rightly points out in the very same book, humans are easily tricked by outer appearance. Their outer appearance being that of humans. You're straight up saying it here. Little bastard, Eric. You little scumbag. The animals are then sent on what essentially amounts to be a pointless mission. There's the Pemelite crystal, this little crystal thing. And Eric says, if we had that crystal, we can fight. We can go and fight. And so the animals enter this building. They grab the crystal. Eric eventually gets it. He goes and beats loads of people up, comes back out, gets rid of the crystal, says, I don't want this anymore. Now on the face of it, this is a pretty solid storyline and there's no deception going on underneath but of course if you add everything else together there's a bit there's an air of mystery to it firstly why couldn't he do it himself why couldn't eric go into this building himself because as we find out later in the series he can pass into the yoke pool without any problem 
Not a problem at all. Why couldn't he go into this little place and just take it for himself? I know there's all these like uh, laser, no wire things coming down around the Pemelite crystal, but surely he's advanced enough to get in there and, and take it or get somebody to turn it off. They're highly advanced and they're obviously in contact with Axe. who would probably find a way to freaking do it. Or if he's infiltrated the sharing and he's one of the sharing's meetings, things, whatever, find out when those things are next deactivated or whatever, whenever there's next freaking scheduled maintenance thing for this crystal and go in there and take it then. I don't freaking know. But not only that, do we honestly think that the Chi don't know what violence entails? They're always talking about how they've been around since the Great Pyramids, thousands of years. And so Eric says, oh, please let us commit violence so we can help you out. And then after committing violence, he says, actually, no, I don't like violence. You can have it back. He's been around for thousands of years. The amount of shit he's probably seen that is violence. He's probably so desensitized to it by this point. Either he's desensitized or he knows exactly what violence is all about. And he would know even before this mission began, I won't want it because I've seen violence, I don't want it done. I don't know, it's just, it's almost like he sent the animals to do this mission so he could watch this battle unfold and then have a bit of a whammy himself. And it's weird how the Pemelite Crystal has never explained how it changes his programming. It's just never explained. But it is mentioned the Yerks are trying to use it, apparently, to take control of all the computers in the world. Again, no explanation how, how that works. It's, it's just a MacGuffin at the end of the day. Next, evidence. Book 20. I mean, he comes around in book 15 and uh, various other books along the way. But the next big piece of evidence for me is in book 20. There's a big summit going on. World leaders coming to some hotel on the coast. And Eric comes up to them and says... On day X, all these leaders are going to have this summit and the Yerks are going to try to capture them. Oh, and also, one of them is already infested. Oh, and also, we don't actually know which one it is. Right. But there's all sorts of stuff going on in this particular plot line that points to some really weird stuff going on. Okay, so I can't remember the days exactly, but let's say, for the point of this argument, that Eric says Saturday is when they were all meeting. But it turns out that the actual summit is taking place on Sunday. Okay, so they infiltrate this building. But when they get in there, they find out that there are these whole series of holograms in this place. Big holograms. And there's also a hologram helicopter. So they're flying along and I think it's the blade ship sends out this hologram of... A president's helicopter, oh, it's, I read it a while ago now, it's been a while. They hologram another helicopter flying ahead while disabling the original helicopter and sucking it up. And then when we get into the banquet room, they hologram a pillar around a small yerk pool. But when the animals eventually go in, they also hologram a whole army of hawk vajir. It's a hologram in a hologram in a hologram and there's a big laser coming down. Weird where they've got all this holographic technology from, isn't it? Just suddenly, the Yerks have this amazing hologramception going on. Because, let's fast forward to Vissa, okay? Vissa 1, Edris, is shocked when Eric can make a hologram inside the Yerk pool that shields them from sight from other Yerks. Take a listen to this. You have very sophisticated holographic capabilities, it would seem. Better than anything we Yerks possess. That is Vissa 1 saying to Eric, you have a hologram that shields us from the sight of the Yerks? We don't have that in our possession. <laughs> Wait a minute, in book 20, you're holographing helicopters to replace helicopters being taken in real time. You're holographing holograms inside other holograms your hologram 
they've got hologram armies of Hawke and world leaders coming up to make speeches. And then later on in the series, Edris says, you hologrammed and we can't see through it? That's amazing. We don't have that ability. Well, who does have that ability? The Chi. And not only that, but when the Animorphs arrive to this summit on the Saturday, guess who's there waiting for them? With these holograms all set up with these hawk bajir everywhere. And the fake summit is going on. And who's waiting behind it? Visa 3. On the Saturday, when the summit took place on the Sunday, who is it who gave the information to the animals that they, would be there, they should be there on a Saturday? It was Eric the Chi. The ultimate spies couldn't figure out, firstly, that the real summit was on a Sunday of world leaders. They couldn't figure out which of these leaders had supposedly been infested, despite knowing that one of them was. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you know that one of the world leaders is infested, but you don't know which one? How? I don't know. But also, how do you not know that the Yerks would have set a fake summit specifically for the Andalite bandits on the Saturday? It just makes no sense. The only way this makes sense is if Eric came up to them and said, you know, this Saturday, that's when it's happening. Goes to the Yerks as well and let bandits think that this summit is on the Saturday. I've just told them be there at this time because that's when the animals will be there. It's the only way it makes sense. Switzerland sitting in the middle with their popcorn. Let's, let's get them to go on Saturday instead and they'll meet up there before the actual summit. Wouldn't it be great? It'd be fucking brilliant. We could sit there and watch it. And we can provide their holograms because they don't have that capability themselves. What do you think, Pebble? I mean, Pebble brings up what is the, because that is the for argument for the conspiracy, and Pebble's just brought up the against. Bad planning. That's the only reasonable argument against it. So either cheeseberry is a real thing, or the authors didn't plan the books very well. I prefer the idea of the cheeseberry. <laughs> I do love my conspiracies, it's great. Awesome. And we know, just for clarification, we know that the real summit was the next day because when Visser 3 ambushes the Animorphs, knowing somehow that the Animorphs would go there on a Saturday, how does he know that? How does he know that they've been told the wrong date? Well, who told them the wrong date? Eric. So, can make the connection, make the connection. But what is it that Visser 3 says to the Animorphs? By the way, Vissa 3 gloated, the real banquet is tomorrow night. So there we have it, weird goings on in book 20. And there's more stuff. But I also want to make a point. How many times does Eric lead the animals directly into Vissa 3? I'll name the books off, I've got the list here. 15, 20, 25, 27, 28, 36 and 38. Not necessarily Eric, but the Chi in general. Go up to the animals and say, hey, this thing's going on. And the animals go there and guess who's there waiting for them? Just there. I know he's a micromanaging bastard, but isn't it just a bit of a coincidence that every time the Chi send the animals off to a mission, guess who's come for a visit on that specific day? Big old V3. Vissa <laughs> Twat. Vissa Twat. He's there causing bother and mishaps. He's there. And also there's another weird little trait that the Chi have going on. Remember how they're the ultimate spies and they are, they're always the most reliable source of information. Quite a few times they send the animals on a mission without actually knowing what the mission is. They'll say, we know that something fishy is going on. Well, what fishy thing is going on? Oh, fucking no. Go find out. Isn't that your job? No, it's your fucking job to find out, you seedy little prick. Fuck you. And that's basically how it goes. And what books are they? 
15, 25, 27 and 28. The chi basically say some shit's going down. You might want to check that out. And the animals are like, okie dokie. Fucking let's go, Scoob. Zoiks. <laughs> it's a fucking Visa 3. Oh, dear. Bastards, them chi. And then we get book 27, The Exposed. We've seen the, the chi a few more times, but I think this is the next big point of evidence. So we start the book with the chi all freezing. And this all comes down to the chi net. This is where we find out about chi net, by the way. The big pemelite ship, which controls all the chi, that's hidden deep underwater, okay? And suddenly, the animals are walking around this mall. And just conveniently enough, Eric is there, frozen in time. Android, like fucking Five Nights at Freddy's stuff going on. Like the endoskeleton things. And he's just there. And so the animals have to go and save him. But nobody sees it. He's in the middle of this busy place. And they take him back on a bus. And they take him through the streets or what have you. And nobody notices this android thing. This is even pointed out in the book, by the way. What are the odds of a gorilla carrying Bill Clinton going unnoticed? We walk out of the mall and no rent -a cop tries to stop us. We take a bus and the driver barely notices. And we're the only passengers? I mean, come on, how likely is that? No video record of anything that had happened when the mall was probably crawling with controllers. When a dressing room in the gap was one of the main entrances to the Yerk pool, not a chance. Now we're supposed to be led to believe that it's the Drode manipulating everything because we see him at the end and the animals are sort of like, haha, as though it was you all along. But it's never explained that he manipulated video footage and all that sort of stuff to set so that nobody saw the Chi. I mean, Christ, he's in the middle of a mall malfunctioning and nobody sees? What would be another explanation for nobody seeing? He's projecting a hologram of himself malfunctioning that only the animals can see, somehow. It's, it's weird why this is happening. Why, why does nobody notice? It's never actually properly explained. It's only just sort of shrugged off as, oh, the drone made everything happen. But the drone's not supposed to interfere like that, surely? Surely? And what powers does the Drode actually have? He's just a minion of Kryak. We don't, we would never really know what he does. And isn't it strange, the, the certain things that go down. So the whole Pemelite ship thing has gone wrong. But only certain aspects of the Chi abilities are taken down, as Mr. King explains. All the Chi have been immobilized. Holographic emitters down, motor centers down, logic centers, speech synthesizers, and chi nets all functioning normally. So why have only certain aspects of their abilities been broken? Is it so that they, they've all still got their hive mind, which means that they can tell the animals, oh, what one's over there, and they've got the ability to actually tell the animals things. They haven't just been completely shut down. But not only that, but we're also alerted to the fact that all along the Pemelite ship has been giving off signals. What sort of signals? It's never explained, but this is explained. The Pemelite ship's signal will have been picked up by an orbiting Yerk spacecraft. They may already be down there waiting for you. Pemelite ship signal. It's never explained if this is a consequence of whatever's happened at the ship. It just says, the Pemlite ship signal, by the way, might have already alerted the Yerks. What signal? Is this just a constant signal going off? Why is it that this all happens and then suddenly the Yerks are also converging on it all? It must be a constant signal because later on in book 36, when we meet the Nartex, after supposedly that she had moved the Pemlite ship to somewhere where it could never be found, the Yerks are able to track it down again, which implies that this signal is still active, like it's this constant thing. But it just so happens to get set off when both the Yerks and the Animorphs are to come together to have a bit of a scuffle. It's just weird. Bad writing, or are the Chiops no good and just want to see a bit of rough and tumble? And then there's something that I spotted when I was reading towards the end of this book. There's a strange strange comparison or parallel between the uh, design of the Drode and the design of the Pemelite ship. I'm going to read you their descriptions and see if you agree with me. 
The faint green outline was strikingly clear. The Pemelite ship was shaped like a sort of clownish version of one of them, like someone had done a cartoon of a Pemelite, exaggerating the vaguely canine head, making the slender hind legs stubby, the belly chubby. It moved on two legs, body held forward and balanced by a stubby tail. It walked like a bird or a small dinosaur. It did hold its hands up, but they were weak, flimsy things, multiple jointed but obviously designed for very light work or very low gravity. Its flesh was dark, almost black. The eyes and mouth were rimmed in green. Both the Droad and the Pemelite ship are described as having green rims and various stubby features. And we meet them both in the same book. And the Droad is supposed to have masterminded this, everything that's gone on in this book. Maybe my mind is just picking on stuff that isn't really there, but I just see that comparison and I see all the other weird stuff going on with the chi and I think, something's going on here. It might just be me. It might. I think some, those are some of the biggest evidences I have going forward. But there are some other weird little bits as well. I'll just sort of list them off now. Book 33. Chapman finds Eric. So there's this big party going on. And Eric, as we discussed in the Chi analysis video, Eric used to go to Marco, uh, Marco's school, but now he doesn't. He's a former classmate. He doesn't go to the same school. Why is he at the school discotheque that's going on? And why is he smoking? Oh, I know you, Eric, Chapman said with his vice principal disciplinarian voice. I know your face all right. I've seen you at meetings of the sharing. I'm just saying I saw you throw away a cigarette just now. Isn't that a bit weird? That Eric is just at this party. Smoking. A hologram. Why? <laughs> I mean, he, he goes, he eventually passes on a message to the Animorphs, but why is he smoking? Why is he drawing attention from Chapman? who says, I know you, why, why is he bringing Chapman's attention? It just makes no sense really, does it? You could argue that he knew that Tobias was going to be coming around the corner, because Tobias comes around the corner from what I remember and sees this as it's just happening. Maybe Eric somehow knew that Tobias was on the way, and wanted to distract Chapman, so he magicked up a cigarette and immediately threw away. A second before Tobias came around the corner and Chapman just so happened to... Uh, yeah, it's either bad writing or there's something fishy going on here. Book 39, The Hidden. At the start of the book, a big helicopter flies over Cassie's barn. Okay. Now we know from book 27, The Exposed, that the Chi move at lightning speed, right? So the button's pressed on the Pemelite ship and... 5,000 kilometers or something away, something ridiculous like that, Eric just wham, he's straight there. Almost instantaneous, like five minutes to travel that distance. That's how fast he moves. They also have the chi net, so they talk like instantaneously with each other. And they're the ultimate spies. The ultimate spies who are so intertwined with your goings on, apparently. As the animals will regularly say, the ultimate spies. But they only just find out that the Yerks have fixed the Helmicron ship and are searching for the blue box signal, that thing, the moment the helicopter is above Cassie's house. That's when Eric decides, Hello Cassie, by the way that helicopter, it's after you. Yeah? Fucking after you, better get running. And that leads into a whole hive of menacing action which I imagine the cheetah just watching with their popcorn hey, look what we've got them doing now the fucking uh, fucking buffalo look there's a fucking buffalo getting involved look at this is crazy shit the, the helicopters found them again yeah what if you're the ultimate spies and you can operate basically instantaneously you should have told the animals this the moment you found out not the moment that the helicopter is right on fucking top of them you might want to tell them that shit Anyway, back to the previous book because I obviously didn't order my notes particularly well. 
<laughs> Mr. King is being tortured in book 38 at the start of the book. He's just sitting there being tortured, being beaten up. Oh, oh, what, oh why do all these? Uh, he's just sitting there. And Marco asks a pretty poignant question. Why doesn't Mr. King just walk out of there and save us a whole lot of trouble? Marco asked. Do we get an answer for this? No. No. Marco's right. He can literally just walk out. But instead he decides to sit there and take it. So the Animorphs come in and we get another big scuffle, funnily enough. He could have just walked out. He's got the capability. Just holograph yourself still sitting there and hologram yourself rolling away. Much like you did in book 53 where you hologrammed yourself as a Taxon or Cassie. And then when Cassie was being eaten, you holographed yourself invisible and rolled away. So you, you can do that. You can. And why don't you? Pff, who the fuck knows that she are doing their own Switzerland thing in here? <laughs> we get to the end of the series and Jake and Cassie basically come to the conclusion that the Chi aren't really our allies. Eric disarms the pool ship when Jake wanted to blow at the blade ship. And they leave on not very nice terms, but Jake had already manipulated the Chi to do what he needed them to do. And I get the feeling Jake was sort of coming around to the idea of, actually, we don't like the Chi. Or was it something that happened in, similar to what happened in book 38 when Jake was able to make it seem like he was being manipulated, but actually he was the one doing the manipulating. He did that to the Andalites in book 38, a brilliant scene, might I remind you. Has he been doing this all along? He knows secretly that the Chi are Switzerland neutral bastards feeding information to both sides. And he thought, actually, if I just keep them on side, I could end up using this to my advantage. Is that what's gone on? Because if it is, that is next level fucking writing. That is meta shit. <laughs> so let's round up uh, with the last couple of bits of evidence, okay? What is Cryak? He's a big eye, isn't he? Cryak is the big eye, the eye of Sauron. Why is that useful information? Well, I'm just amplifying my conspiracy side up to the highest level at the moment, okay? Because, what is it that the Chi keep mentioning over and over and over again? As I was doing the research for this video and the analysis one, analysis, I kept noticing something. They always mention pyramids. Every time. I'm as old as the pyramids. We helped build the pyramids. I was around during the time of the pyramids. What is that big, awful organization that's basically at the top of all conspiracy theories. <laughs> Pamela's rolling her eyes at me. That I'm, 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 this is beyond what I believe now. I'm just being wacky for the sake of it. But you've got Cryak, who's the big overseeing eye. And you've got the Chi always talking about pyramids. What happens if you combine those two images? An eye and a pyramid. Huh. The shadow, shadowy organization that's secretly controlling everything. The Illuminati, ladies and gentlemen, we've done it! The Chi are in cahoots, cahoots with Cryak and they are secretly the Illuminati. Yeah, I've gone overboard now, just, <laughs> just a bit of fun. Now as my last bit of, not so much evidence, but just sort of circumstantial, supplemental things going on. The Howlers are a very interesting race in the Animal series. They are heavily related to or associated with Cryak, who is sort of the opposite of the Elemist. So you've got Cryak and the Elemist, okay? Uh, the Cryak has got the Drode, who is this sort of minion creature. A future Annie Theory video is that much like the Drode is a subpart of Cryak, Cassie is a subpart of the Elemist. And that might seem wacky now, but I do have an idea about that. She is an interdimensional being, after all, as we discovered in Megamorphs 4. Anyway, there's probably something else there rather than Cassie, but... In fact, in fact there was. In the Elmas Chronicles, he sent down a portion of himself to see the proto Andalites, didn't he? Remember that? So he does a similar sort of thing where he puts a miniature version of himself and just puts it on to mess around with stuff. So Elmas has got something like that as well. So we've got some symmetry stuff going on here. 
You've got this god figure up here that was briefly mentioned in book 27, I think. One of those. Yeah, there's this weird god figure that's ex <laughs> implied once and never again, but whatever. You've got those two there. And then on the Cryak side, you've got the minion and you've also got the... Almost like the Secret Service Army thing. And they're called the Howlers. And they're a hive mind and they only have one goal in mind. Okay? As we'll explain here. The Howlers made no demands. They just attacked. Maybe that's all they wanted. To destroy. So that's the Howlers. And then what have we got over here? We know that the Chi are in talks with the Elemist on occasion. Because remember that time it was in book 26, The Attack, where Eric just comes in and says, I've just been chatting with my buddy, the Elemist. He's filled me in. Don't worry, guys. I'm all caught up. So the Chi are over here. And what do we know about them? They also have a hive mind. And they say that they take after their creators, the Pemelites. Now, how are they described? They loved games and jokes and laughter. They had no evil in their hearts. They had no evil in their souls. So on the one hand, we've got the Howlers who have nothing but evil in their hearts and they all their only goal is to destroy. And they're on the Cryak side. And then we've got the Chi slash the Pemelites who are on the Elemist side. And all they want to do is have fun and a bit of laughter. They have no evil in their hearts at all. And it all just comes across as so symmetrical over there. Is that what the Chi are? Are they the other Howlers? Hive mind, one goal in mind, completely pacifistic, whereas the Howlers are just like purely violent. Complete opposites. And they're in touch with their higher beings up there. And yeah, there's a weird parallel going on up there. This, of course, would conflict, however, as far as I can see with the overarching chi spiracy theory in which the chi are more sort of in the middle, just dicking with everybody. But I've given you all the major bits of evidence. There are other bits as well, but I thought I'd give you the, the big stuff here of the chi just being total asses. Like for instance, when <laughs> Eric disguised himself as a truck at the start of book 38, but he then said that the animals had to go and steal a truck to sneak into a facility. Why didn't they just use Eric disguised as a truck to get into the facility? Needless conflict, needless conflict. But again, that all ties into, because they aren't the howlers, they don't do violence, so they have to get someone else to do it in their place. It's, it's a weird thing. Is the chi spiracy legit? Okay, and now I know this is my own, my own idea, and I'm probably more for than the majority of Anmos than fans. Do I think it's legit, or do I think it's a consequence of a combination of retconning, bad writing, and the introduction of ghostwriters who might not have been quite so clued up on the finer details of the series for which the team would probably fall into? <sighs> It's hard to say, because there are big bits in here that would point in that direction, but I think, I don't think the pattern is solidified. I think there is a pattern, but I don't think it's enough. It's like a snowflake, okay? So a snowflake is a wonderful pattern, and you look at it and you think, that looks like it's been formed deliberately. That shape, it's the, it's the intelligent design argument. Remember when they were floating about? They said, this looks so well designed that it must have been created. Must have been. No. Sometimes these things form naturally. By coincidence. Not so much coincidence usually, but you get what I'm saying. Maybe this pattern that I'm seeing and that other people have started seeing, that some people have told me, actually, yeah, I think you might have a point. <sighs> As much as I like the cheese spiracy and I'm having fun talking about it and ranting on about it, I think it's more down to inconsistent writing and the fact that it's a kid's book. So my, like I'm going to do with most of these anti-theory videos, I'm going to say yes, no, or maybe. And my judgment for this one, get your gavels out everyone. 
false bang bang with uh, ba basically a not guilty verdict not guilty get the jury the jury comes back with a with a vote of not guilty the ju jury being me and the judge being me because yeah that's how it works when there's only me here yeah uh, Pamela what would you vote Guilty. I think it's down to bad writing. You think it's not guilty as well. Okay, so the jury is Pe Pebble and I, and we say not guilty. Not proven innocent, and there might be some more evidence along the way. You never know. But our verdict is not guilty. You get away with it this time, you G, you bastards, you scummy little wankers. <clears throat> Barry. Thank you very much for watching this. It's took, took me a while to research this. There's, there are other little bits as well. Um, but I think it's a fun idea. I really like this idea. And as much as I say it's probably not true, there's a part of me that believes. There's a little part of me that thinks that the authors did this intentionally. But hey-ho. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ra!